Good morning. My name is the Reverend Meg Harvey and I'm the Vicar of the Parish of Mount Herbert near Christchurch in New Zealand. Welcome to Sunday Morning Prayer. This is an online resource that we are offering uh, uh, to our parishioners and to anyone else out there who is not quite yet comfortable um, coming back to church, to a group gathering, uh, as we are able to in New Zealand, or, um, or if you are not able to in another country around the world. Uh, this is the Sunday morning daily office from the Anglican prayer book. And uh, we have psalms and readings and uh, a little reflection too. So I hope that this nourishes you and feeds you um, just enough until you are ready or can get back to church and join in uh, corporate worship. worship. Okay. Oh, uh, the service can be found on our website, mountherbertparish.wordpress.com, under Sunday Morning Prayer, uh, and you can follow along with that. Awake, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine upon you. Open our lips, O Lord, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good tidings to the afflicted. The Lord has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty for the captives, and to release those in prison. To comfort all who mourn, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning a garment for spl of splendour for the heavy heart. They shall be called trees of righteousness, planted for the glory of the Lord. Therefore I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God. For God has robed me with salvation as a garment and clothed me with integrity as a cloak. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes the seeds to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And the psalm this morning is Psalm 52. Not one of the nicer psalms. Psalm 52, Judgment on the Deceitful. Why do you boast, O mighty one, of mischief done against the godly? All day long you are plotting destruction. Your tongue is like a sharp razor, you, work, you worker of treachery. You love evil more than good, and lying more than speaking the truth. You love all words that devour, O deceitful tongue. But God will never break you down forever. He will snatch and tear you from your tent. He will uproot you from the land of the living. The righteous will see and fear and will laugh at the evildoer, saying, See, the one who would not take refuge in God, but trusted in abundant riches, and sought refuge in wealth. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the steadfast love of God forever and ever. I will thank you forever because of what you have done. In the presence of the faithful, I will proclaim your name, for it is good. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. In our reading, we continue on in chapter 27 with Paul's travels. Uh, we are reading from uh, chapter 27 from verse 33. Just before daybreak, 
Paul urged all of them to take some food, saying, Today is the fourteenth day that you have been in suspense and remaining without food, having eaten nothing. Therefore I urge you to take some food, for it will help you survive. For none of you will lose a hair from your head. After, after he said this, he took bread and giving thanks to God in the presence of all, he broke it and began to eat. Then all of them were encouraged and took, to, took food for themselves. We were in all 276 persons in the ship. After they had satisfied their hunger, they lightened the ship by throwing the wheat into the sea. In the morning, they did not recognize the land, but they noticed a bay with a beach on which they planned to run the ship ashore, if they could. So they cast off the anchors and left them in the sea. At the same time, they loosened the ropes that tied the steering oars, then hoisting the foresail to the wind, they made for the beach. But striking a reef, they ran the ship aground. The bow, bow bow, bow struck and remained immovable, but the stern was being broken up by the force of the waves. The soldiers' plan was to kill the prisoners so that none might swim away and escape. But the centurion, wishing to save Paul, kept them from carrying out their plan. He ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and make for the land, and the rest to follow, some on planks and others on pieces of the ship. And so it was that all were brought safely to land. Well, once again, like last week, we have um, really just a bit of a travel log from Paul, although it is um, uh, a good to note that he blessed and broke bread with his brethren on the on the ship. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, there's a hair in my mouth. Uh, gives us um, some evidence that uh, the, that very early on. The, uh, well, really, from the beginning, the the Christians were uh, having communion, were were sharing in bread and not not in Paul's tale, but in wine as well. It was something. Uh, the, the early church really were house churches. They 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 met in houses. Um, it's, it wasn't until a, the four, three or three or four hundreds that churches began to be built, like, like we see today. Um, and so they would just meet, they would meet in houses for fellowship and to share communion, to share bread and wine, which in those early days were staple f food and drink. Uh, so it's, I think that's uh, something we can take from Paul's story. Um, thinking back to the psalm, I always find it quite difficult when the psalmist is very condemning and judgmental and you could always use the word nasty about those who are doing wrong, those who are doing evil. Um, I think we've come a long way from, well, no, let me say, I hope we've come a long way from the majority of Christians being so harshly judgmental I understand the Psalms were written by by Jewish people, Jewish men, but um, but I, as Christians, I I think that Jesus' message of love um, has softened our condemnation or our judgment on people who sin or who live sinful lives. Uh, we're now called more to help them and to um, show them the light of Christ and call the Holy Spirit upon them than to just 
criticize and uh, speak harshly of them. I found it very interesting at the end of that psalm, um, which, you know, is written well before Jesus. Um, I trust in the steadfast love of God forever and ever. I will thank you forever because of what you have done. It's another one of those little uh, clues, Easter eggs in the Bible that tells us what is to come, that tells us there will be something that will save us um, and, uh, and will call us to, to be righteous, to not sin, uh, but will save us nonetheless. Uh, and um, I think that's an important, an important thing to remember that all through Scripture, Jesus' coming was predicted, was talked about, was considered. Uh, and, and when he came, as I've just said, he came with a message of love. And he really, really challenged and changed the world that he came into. Uh, into the Jewish society that he came into. Uh, and that is why today we have, um, we, well, we have three um, uh, religions that uh, believe in one God, um, Islam being one of them. But um, that is why we have Christianity and Judaism, because some of the Jews of the time of Jesus um, would not accept his message of love and forgiveness and mercy uh, and did not believe that he was the Messiah. Uh, they were expecting something quite different. They were expecting a son of David. They were expecting a king and a, and a great soldier. Um, but they got love instead. And it is so much easier to love than to hate takes a lot less energy. So there are my thoughts for the morning. So on to the song of our adoption. Blessed are you, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You have blessed us in Christ with every spiritual realm, spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. Even before the world was made, you chose us to be yours in Christ that we should be holy and blameless in your sight. In love, you destined us for adoption as your children through Christ Jesus. Such was your pleasure and your purpose. To the praise of your glorious grace, which you have freely given us in your beloved Son. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Now we come to the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we say uh, the Lord's Prayer in Tereo, which is the language of the native Māori people of New Zealand. E to mato mato e tarangi, ki e tapu te ingoa, ki e tai mai tauranga te ratanga, ki e metia tau e pai ai ki runga ki te whenua, ki e ritiano ki tau tarangi, Ho mai ki e mato aene he taro ma mato mo tenei rā. Mura o mato hara. Me mato hoki e mirane e o te hanga e hara na ki e mato. 
au hoki mato e kawea ki e whakawaia. Engari whaka orongi e mato e te kino. No hoki te rangatira tanga te kaha me te koruria. Ake, ake, ake. Amene. <clears throat> and now we have our prayers of thanksgiving and petition. Most generous God, you are ever ready to give good gifts to your children. Receive our prayers for the world and for the church. We pray for the nations of the world, for an end to war, and for peaceable solutions to conflict, for wise government, and a just sharing of the resources of the earth, for wellness and comfort in loss. Hear our prayers for those who are tortured in, or held in prison, for those taken from their families and land, for your little ones who are dying of hunger and thirst, for a failing economy that is affecting millions. Show us your face in these your children and help us to minister to them as we would minister to you. God of grace, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church, for visionary leadership, and for faithful discipleship, for unity between Christians, for the mission of the church throughout the world, for blessings gained in lockdown to endure. Hear our prayers for all who are ministers of your gospel for all who unsettle us with your words of truth, for your little ones who are crying out for words of forgiveness and grace. Show us your face in these your children and help us to listen to them as we would listen to you. God of grace, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our community, for loving nurture of children and care for the vulnerable, for respect for individuals and concern for the well-being of all. Hear our prayers for those who are strangers or newcomers here, for those who are homeless, destitute or without work, for your little ones who are hurting from rejection and abuse. Show us your faith, face in these your children and help us to welcome them as we would welcome you. God of grace, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all in need or distress, for comfort for the grieving and for hope for the despairing, for companionship for the lonely and relief for those in pain, for peace for those with fear or anxiety about how our world is now. Hear our prayers for those who are shut away from society, the disabled and frail and those in lockdown, for those who long for a comforting touch or a kindly word, for your little ones who are starved of love and affection. Show us your face in these your children and help us to care for them as we would care for you. God of grace, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for all who have died in the faith for all good and holy people who have recognised you in their midst. Show us your face and let us hear your voice, that we also may welcome you into our lives and with all your saints receive from you the gift of everlasting life. God of grace, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
these prayers we offer in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Sorry, I'm not meant to lick my fingers. And so we come to the morning collect. God, our Creator, yours is the morning and yours is the evening. Let Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine forever in our hearts and draw us to that light where you live in radiant glory. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us for Sunday morning prayer. I pray that it has offered your soul some nourishment uh, <clears throat> to take you through the week. Uh, and stay safe, stay well, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you, those you love, and those you struggle to love, this day and evermore. Amen. Kakite.